So this next part of the question is asking us to draw a sketch for the following levers and state a practical example for each. So I've gone ahead and I've already drawn these out. So the first class lever, what's important to know about it is that it has the fulcrum in the middle and then the force and the load on either side. So drawing another one out here, the, like I said, the important thing is that the fulcrum's in the middle if the load, let me draw a better square. The load doesn't have to be on the right or on the left side. Um, just as long as the fulcrum is in the middle, that is what makes this a first class lever. And then to go along with some practical examples for the first class lever, uh, we have a pair of scissors. As you can see, we have the fulcrum in the middle, the applied force, on this handle and the load uh, is actually whatever object you're trying to cut so you can say this is like uh, some shears trying to cut a branch or something like that and this is like two first class le uh, two first class levers combined um, here with the same fulcrum and the same load but the but the effort being applied two different places and then another first class lever could be a hockey stick and we have to be careful with a hockey stick because it can also be called a third class lever and you'll see that in just a minute but with the first class it's like we are holding this part of the hockey stick still and using our hand to bring this part of the hockey stick back as long as we have our fulcrum in the middle it is a first class lever and of course the puck kind of acts as the load because it's putting a force um, of kind of a resistance force onto the hockey stick when you are using it. Then looking at the second class lever, what's important to know is that we have the load in the middle with the force and the fulcrum on either side. But again, what's important is that the load is in the middle. So looking at an example of this, here we have a wheelbarrow. In the wheelbarrow, your fulcrum is where your wheel is. The load would be the center of mass of the rocks or the gravel or the sand or whatever you're carrying. So the center of mass is gonna be represented by this arrow here. As you can see that it lies between the fulcrum and the effort, which is your hands when you're carrying it. So when you lift this up, you got the load in the center and the fulcrum on the other end. So this makes it a second class lever. And then finally, we have our third class lever where we have the effort in the middle. So the effort is the force that we apply. And then on either side of it, we have the load and the fulcrum. So in this case, the hockey stick could also be a third class lever if you're holding the end still, the end is stationary, and you're using your hand to swing the hockey stick like this. So again, the hockey stick can be a third or first class lever. And remember the, distance, the, the difference was what part of it is staying stationary and what part of it is swinging. So here the middle is stationary and we're using our hand to swing the top backwards, whereas in the third class lever, our end is staying stationary, and we're using our hand to swing the middle through, and again, the puck kind of acts as a resistance. And then another example, just to go along with that, is in our bodies, is our, our arm. So if we're holding a, a ball, I've got this green ball here, and when you lift it, like a bicep curl, the way your bicep is actually attached to your arm, obviously I haven't drawn this to anatomically correct, but just enough to convey how this is a third class lever. Noticing we have the fulcrum, we have the effort, and we have the load. And given that the effort is in the middle, that tells us it is a third class lever. Third class.